Hey, so I just thought I'd take the time to come down to the woods and do a quick video. I apologise for the wind, but we're having quite, quite uh, nice weather. The wind's not actually too strong, but everyone knows what these cameras are like and microphone. I just thought I'd do a little video on the usage of a just a standard pocket knife. This is obviously a Victorinox, this is the farmer. And in, most importantly, I think the farmer's got a really, really good awl, as well as do the rest of the Pioneer range. As you can see, that's a really substantial awl. I like the way this comes out the hand as opposed to the way they come out on stand Swiss Army knives, which is like this. It works, but this does a lot better job of boring in. As you can see, it's quite well shaped. But just, I think there's a lot of uh, pressure put on the people using that fixed blade sheath knives as their primary carving tools, but I find them a bit awkward, especially when they're long in the blade. Over four inches, I find them a bit cumbersome for any type of fine carving. And, the benefit of these is you can carry these anywhere, really, with some exceptions, but most people have got these sort of knives in their pockets and it, you should never really feel discouraged that you can't go out and do general bushcraft tasks or practice fieldcraft, which, which is what my channel centres around. You shouldn't really feel discouraged that you can't do these just because you're carrying this as your only cutting tool. Yes, you wouldn't want to use this in a survival situation as your only cutting tool, but for everyday use in bushcraft tasks, there really isn't anything wrong. The real benefit of the, this model, which is a Tinker, it's got this little small blade, which makes it exceptionally good for carving fiddly bits like the barbs on a fishing spear or netting needles. So I'll just start going through some of the things you can make with a, a pocket knife. First few items you can make, which are quite easy, are tealers. I did a little section on making these in a, a spring snare video. Basically, a little piece of hazel, which is what I use, sharpened at one end, carved it a chisel at the other, and split. This is basically just used for holding up your snare at a correct height and things like that. It takes seconds to make, really handy. No, no need for a large sheath knife or anything like that. Really ridiculously easy with a pocket knife. This isn't. Um, fieldcraft related but it's more camping than bushcraft related and it's just a, a pot hook, pot hanger even, especially with the little bit on the Tinker models or other Swiss Army knife models, really really easy because the bl small blade gets into these little detailed bits with ease to be honest. Um, I started recently sort of making netting needles, this is a large one for making fishing nets and gate nets and things like that. But just recently I also started this one. Obviously it's not finished, but this is a lot smaller and ideal for making things like purse nets, which you use an O-ring for. You can't get this through a standard size O-ring. Although it holds a lot of cordage, it doesn't really get through the split ring or O-ring, which is neither on a purse net or a bolt net. But especially with the little blade of the Tinker, exceptionally easy to do this. It takes time, but a lot easier than using the large blade on the farmer. I also made these hand lines, which are nice fun little projects to make. It's got me little mate as marked me little standing oak on this one, which is a lot nicer. I filled in the split in this one with pine pitch and it adds to a nice appearance. This is hawthorn and this one's hazel. This one's got a little fish carved into it. But <laughs> if you can use these in your country, which these are ideal, really nice, or if you want to use them, you have to do your own actions I can't really be held responsible but these really do catch fish not as well as rods obviously but handy just having your pocket if you follow me on Instagram I actually made a little fishing kit out of a cigar case for these held hooks split shot little pieces of rubber for making quill holding quill floats on if you are Russell that's just a dog as I always have my dogs out but quite e quite nice little carving tasks really easy for the little bit like I say for carving the spool section but nice little tasks for whittling you can obviously carry these around on your camping trips and wanders through <laughs> the wilderness or just the general British countryside the all really comes into its own for making things like this which is just a little example of a, a stake for a snare or a trap but I would probably, this is a bit dead, so I would probably want to use green wood and maybe a li little bit longer, but it just gives a example. Nice clean board hole, as you can see, for tying off and a pointed and chamfered at the top to stop mushrooming. 
dogs eating the grass and must, mustn't be feeling very well but obviously you can also make things like this which is this is cut down but this is an example of how to make a, a pair of shooting sticks with just a good torn ox or any knife of an awl basically two lengths of hazel a board through with the awl and a peg put through to hold it together it's not as good as a a modern made pair of shooting sticks but it really does do the job and I've had to make these in a pinch of when a, a long range steadier shot was needed and they've worked out well they don't last forever a bolt or a nut and bolt in there would work a lot better but for a quick on the go job these work really well these obviously just cut down so I can get them into the camera frame but it, it shows the point I'm trying to make um, and all is also very handy for making this hair pipe which not, I wouldn't recommend using these because these are quite cruel and frankly illegal. But for practicing little old fashioned techniques of snaring, this is describing mascals. But if you want to see a video on mating this trap, Malcolm from JGR Survival does a, a really good video on this. It's just a piece of el uh, elder bored out because it's got a piffy centre, forked at the other, and the line runs through it. If you want to know more about this, Matt, like I say, Malcolm does a fantastic video on this. So. That's just another little thing you can make, with the, especially if the all helps starting out that boring process. I also made, now I'm not really an expert in making these or I've never really used them to be honest, but this is just a little gig, frog and fish gig, it's it's barbed, it's, it's tied together with twine with wedges to keep it in that shape. Frankly quite sharp points, but they're starting to mushroom a bit, but the, the tip with these is to really use a piece of nice dry seasoned wood or harden them over a fire if you want something that lasts long but for a little five minute job if you need to gig yourself some frogs or fish in a, survival, a wilderness living situation or a survival situation this that's quite easy to do with a pot of nice surprising and I don't really make many of these but that's just another thing you can make is a frog gig, frog and fish gig now this is just something I made on the fly just a little setting stick for setting fen traps and rabbit warrens it just goes underneath the trigger plate and just stops the trap being set off when you're covering the trap over with soil and obviously you can remove this from under the trigger plate once the trap's set and lift the safety catch which holds the fen trap from closing on your fingers and it keeps your hands far away from the jaws when this, uh, taking off the safety catch I also made obviously you might know this from the other videos, but that's just a little spring snare trigger system which uses a nail and a fishing swivel to hold the snare off the ground. That was quite easy. Obviously you need the nail and things like that, but it's just a sharpened stake and round it at the other end. And I've got this rabbit skin here just to prove that for small game like rabbits and taking the breast fillets um, of pigeons and pheasants, a pocket knife is really, really good for that. You don't want to be butchering a whole animal with a pocket knife, it's not really designed for it, but for skinning, it does a really nice job. This is in need of a tan, but I just thought I would bring it out as a demonstration piece. Now, all these all of these Victorinox knives are really good for general woodcraft tasks and field craft, especially given that they've got an awl on them, and this one's got a saw. Um, I believe an open nail, or even a case sod bust, does a bit better for a general shooting knife as it's got a point and it just makes incisions into uh, hide a lot easier than this. You can do it, but I find the point on an open nail is a lot better. For uh, gutting animals and hocking rabbits and skinning them like this one, th this was actually skinned with, a, with the open nail. That's the major disadvantage of an open nail is that it locks, so it's not truly legal to carry on day-to-day -day basis like these Victorinox knives are. Now, although I'll just make a word on the saws which you often find on Swiss Army knives, they're really good and sharp, but for general, for versatility, I find carrying just a knife like this, or a knife like this, in conjunction with carrying a folding saw a lot better, because I find a folding saw does a, a lot better job, especially with a one with a blade probably about five inches long, six inches long at a minimum, does a lot better job for processing down wood and cutting steak so I'll always carry a folding saw even when I've got a saw on this knife. If I don't I can still use this but I find a folding saw a lot better. 
also, when I go camping, I most often carry a phone saw, a pocket knife like this, and an axe. If I'm doing heavy carbon tasks, obviously, a fixed blade knife, like a mora or something like that, does a lot better job of heavy duty carbon tasks and shelter, shelter building, what have you. But I find just for everyday tasks like the ones described, these are ideal. You can also obviously make, I don't have any examples to show you, but you can obviously make deadfall trigger systems like your figure fours and your Siberian deadfall triggers. Also, if you follow me on Instagram again, you'll see a couple of examples of a, a log deadfall, which uses, which was described in AR Harden's book and has been used for thousands of years. It, instead of being a, a trigger system which is baited, the animal passes over a trigger bar pressing it as it passes, as it goes over the top and the lo a log comes down and crushes them. Obviously you, you want to use a, a piece of deadfall that's lying around because you won't be able to cut it down with a conventional phone saw or the saw on this especially. But for making the fork sticks and the cross piece and the toggles, ideal. I don't, like I say, I don't have any examples of them to show and I don't have any examples of any other spring snare mechanisms which are really easy to carve with these so like I said that was just a quick video showing some of the examples of items which can be made in a field craft content um, with just simply a pocket knife which is a legal carry and you, like I said you should never feel hindered just because you're carrying one of these these will do a lot of work for you especially carving as long as you're careful and you don't try and you don't work it too hard to the point where it starts falling apart Ideal, really, really good knives. I recommend buying this if you ha had one Swiss Army knife or Victorinox carrying in the woods. I would recommend this farmer. It's got everything you would need. It makes an ideal camp knife and stuff like that. But like I say, that was just a little video demonstrating some of the little technical things you can make for field craft, like tealers and hand lines. Obviously, catapults and things like that can be made. I don't have any at hand, but catapults can be easily made especially with this because it's got a saw and you can carve all the bark off and you can carve you can carve it how it wants to fit in your hand ideal tools ideal tools especially for everyday carrying stuff like that really nice knives and these are all like these are just a handful of things you can make with just a pocket knife there's far other things you could probably make which i haven't described but these are just things all these things i've shown you i've made with pocket knives over and over and over again and never never felt hindered so let us see like i say thank you for watching uh, please rate, comment, subscribe, and keep me encouraged in making this content. Which it's really helpful when I see encouraging con uh, comments under my videos, which I've been getting recently. It really does help me push myself forward in making these videos and sharing traditional field craft content, which is primarily what my channel is about. And it really is, it, it really warms the heart when you see people saying how good a video is and interesting content and things like that. And it really does encourage us to push on and keep going. So thank you for watching, please rate, comment, subscribe and I'll see you on the trail again.